Good morning. So today I wanted to talk to you about the spirit right now that God had told me that was very rampant going around. Um, this is the spirit that we need to um, deal with, and that's the spirit of Jezebel. It's not Ishtar has been dealt with. It's not Baal. It's Jezebel. And in that march where were all these women I came to know that there was a lot of witches there too. And I guess they were canceling or they're trying to cancel the prayers of the people that were there. Um, that's what the Holy Spirit had talked to me about. And he keeps on telling me God's timing is perfect. And I always been asking him again because I, I keep on seeing if it's not a clock, it's last time it was a watch. So um, that's why I'm trying to understand what's going on because you can, Ishtar can't cancel Ishtar. And it, um, Ishtar, Esther, had nothing to do with, uh, um, with Baal worship or the chatting of children. You know, that was Elijah. Elijah is the one that is the one who did the bill. Um, and not just in Jay, they were the ones who dealt with this. And right now, I know that the Jezebel spirit is very rampant. I see it. I see it in people, you know, women screaming at their husbands, and the poor men are like really down to the ground. That's what you see in culture right now. The women are trying to take over. But Ishtar never did that. Ishtar just converted people into the other sex, right? And, um, but, um, so right now it's not even Baal anymore. It's Jezebel. And you see it in the culture because you see that women has been brought up and the man has been brought down. And that was Ahab was being controlled by his wife, right? So that's what's going on right now. I see it everywhere I go on TV. I see um, the way women treat men. And that's the Jezebel spirit. And Elijah has to deal with that spirit. In the story of Esther, is that her uncle, Mordecai, um, told her to call herself Ishtar because that was at the time the idol that was worshipped and uh, I guess King Artaxerxes was really into worshiping, worshiping these idols so that's really she was beautiful and very attractive and tall and beautiful but also because she had the name Ishtar and he wanted that he thought maybe you know, I will get the blessing of Ishtar, right, if I, if I marry her. Um, after a while, I think Mordecai was called Marduk, and, um, and I think that's one of their gods, too. So a lot of people respected him because of it. Back then, there was a lot of, they were Jewish, most, a lot of them were just idol worshippers anyway. They took in the, the same culture. So, like I said, her anointing was to save the Jewish people. And it's very strange the way God does things sometimes because when she took that name, she took that image because that was her name. It's like God turned it, right? So. That's not something that we have to worry about right now because it has been done. Um, what we need now is the spirit of Elijah to rise up. The spirit of Moses also is here and he's dealing with Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is here and he wants to take the freedom away from people because where Pharaoh is, is control, right? So you got a few people that are doing this and God is I know God's timing is perfect and his process 
His promises are never, it doesn't go back to him. His word never go back to him void. So that's why I, I'm trying to understand what is going on because the Ishtar um, platform has been deplatformed. Um, and Yeshua, well, when he died, he went to Hades. Why he went to Hades? He not only spirits there, but he got the keys back from Satan. That means that Satan had no more control of who goes to Haiti. And it tells us in scripture who he justifies, he justifies, right? So that means even people who are pagan, he justifies them to fulfill his purpose. Like he not exerted, he was pagan. He was able to use him, you know, like King Cyrus also. So, what people need to understand is that infiltration in the church, in events, that's, that's happening. The enemy, Satan, sends his people and tell who is who. You can't. You know how I know? This guy, that he's a Freemason, is so strange because that day he was there, my credit card didn't didn't work and he paid for my meal and I'm thinking okay that's that's you know I know what this is I, I felt something wrong but that's okay I, I, out of curiosity I wanted to know what was going on all the tables were taken <laughs> table he was just sitting there he's looking at me and he's talking about things, and I'm like, okay, this guy is mentally is not well, I think, but he's just really tall, very tall. And I was like, what's going on? And he told me that. Um, so he asked me about the church. He asked me what church do I go to, and I told him. He said, and I asked him about his church, and he said the one that is over here that's very popular. It's a huge church somewhere. And then he started talking about his wife that had asked him for the divorce papers. And he wants to also to divorce her because she was a witch. So I'm like, wait a minute, she's a witch and she's going to church. He said, yeah. And I'm like, ah, crappers. In my head, I was like, what is this going on? And then he started talking things that I was like, I still have it in my heart. Thank God my son had his headphones on because he couldn't hear all the things that he said. And I was like, oh, okay, I know what I'm dealing with. And he told me, it's a witch. And he said, look, so proud. And I'm like, got it, got it. I understand now, I understand and they live in South Hills. And I'm like, oh gosh. So I was thinking, you know, how how is it that people don't have discernment of knowing who's a witch and who's not? Because she's in this big church. And then I started getting, I guess, the algorithm of YouTube started showing me pastors talking about witchcraft in the church. And that's how I came to know about it. And I'm like, wow. A lot of these Christian events, they don't know it, but Satan, his minions, his people, send them to these events to counterattack what they, you know. And um, that's why I was worried so much, mostly also because of, um, of attacks. But there's a lot of people like that. So I was like praying to God and praying out to him to, to do something. Because said when God leads you to do something before you he will prepare the way financially also he will prepare the way that's how we were able to come over here he 
got me that money to come over here. If I don't hear anything about this or that, I can't do anything, right? Because I'm a widow, I don't have nobody. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, how am I gonna go out there with no money and then I'm gonna be stranded? Because he always tells me, I will provide, I will provide. I haven't gotten that provision yet. So I know that that's not the time. That when the time comes, he will provide. And um, that's what I've been very um, anxious about, right? Because I wanted to go to that march. Because I was like, oh crap, there's going to be a whole bunch of witches there. So, usually what I do is that I go to maps on my hand on, the, on th that area. And I pray to God to protect it. It might sound like witchcraft what I'm doing. But it's not. The Holy Spirit said, you could do this. Look, you know, you got these threads. I had two threads that were tangled up because I was cleaning, trying to find my passport. And I was looking for the passport, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got all my threads tangled up. So, you on something. That's how I got hyper-focused on the location that I was. I was super hyper-focused on this location. And, um... I thought it was uh, this place, but I, I tried another place just to see, it, right? So he hyper-focused you on things. I gave my life to him. I told him, take over my mind, my soul, my spirit. Take you do whatever. I don't want to be in control of nothing because I have other things to deal with. And he had to focus me on things that doesn't really make much sense. But I'm doing it anyway because I'm hyper focused on that. And it might seem weird and strange, but if you are a Christian and you read the Bible, the prophets did some crazy stuff. Even King David, when Saul was prosecuting him with his men, and he had the sword of Goliath, somehow he went into the enemy's territory. And he's acting like he was crazy with the Goliath sword. I'm just thinking in my head, I could see that. I could see that. I could see him dribbling and you know, babbling and, and pulling his hair or doing whatever for them to say, okay, he's he's gotten bonkers, you know. Who told him to kill the Goliath? Now look what happened. So they took the sword from him. And I guess it's, it was like a peacekeeping thing. Like they took the sword and then they had pity on him because of this. So he was super smart at the same time, you know. So... But, but that's a crazy story. You know, Rahab, my goodness. Because I know in India, they use the scarlet thread for protection. But that is pagan. So Rahab was pagan, but she didn't know what, you know, um, Abba was doing. And the children of Israel were very powerful. They had a very powerful God. She knew about it. So I know the Indian culture because my husband was from India. He was from um, Bombay, but his original thing was Madras. So um, I know about the thread because he did it for my son. They usually put it on their waist also when they're babies as a protection. So she took that scarlet thread. I guess they saw that she had it. Or well, the kids there had it, whoever was in her household. And um, she brought it down. And that's how they knew. Who knew, right? The scarlet thread, I always think about that little tree that I see that, you know, that looks like a go head. And I was like, oh gosh, I wish I could go there, but it's a ravine. And just put a scarlet thread on to see if it turns bright. I had done the craziest things. I remember the Holy Spirit telling me about this song 
a ribbon around an oak tree, a yellow ribbon around an oak tree. And I've done that. I did it for Phoenix. And I did it for here. Because I thought I was able to. Cleveland has one, but it's um, it's not yellow. I didn't have it at the time. I didn't know where to get it. I was roaming the city like I was lost or something. You know, it's like it's very leads you here and there. <sighs> so the Bible have all these things that think that they are strange, but they're not in the kingdom of heaven. Um, it's so many things that I have done, it might sound strange, but they're not because I heard people talking about the grays and I know about royal and purple and everything all of a sudden purple, like, oh my gosh, even the, the northern lights look purple, they're supposed to be green, I don't know what they look purple, so I said, okay, purple, and then I saw this were tangled and I said, I'm going to detangle this from that. Everything I do, I always bring it to the feet of Jesus. I said, Yeshua, you gave me the authority. Here, I bring it to you. This is yours again. This is his. But you have to take it from the enemy because they're using it. So, I don't know what's going on. I know I get a lot of anxiety, a lot of burdens. And um, being a prophet in a way is very difficult, it's very stressful. Um, especially if you don't have um, if you don't have your tribe around you, right? Because you need a tribe to understand what you're doing and not see it as something that is witchcrafty or evil. And um, but that's how the kingdom of heaven is. It has a lot of things that you would not believe. It's because that's what the fallen angels did. It was not good crap. It was not. And they bought these things and they showed the woman and, and they turned it around. It's all about turning things around, right? Like I, I know that's why God always telling me, let's change this. Let's turn it around. God did it for Job. He did it for Joseph. He did it for King David. He turned things around. So that's what I've been asking God, you know. Whenever I see, because they do things, they use witchcraft through movies, they use witchcraft through music, symbology, even, even the games, you could tell that they're using witchcraft also when they super hyper focus on one number, especially 23. And they show it because they showing they showing the demons because it's just the demons right now are rampant everywhere it's in people and that's one thing that Yeshua did do when he was here he was taking demons I don't know how many demons he took out left them right from the people and um, but I don't think the, I think the only church that I know that has done that is the Catholic Church like with the exorcism and all these things. But like on how we have a wayward church everywhere that doesn't understand the battle, the warfare, and how to get rid of it. You know? So I just wanted to come in one minute and because I'm kind of frustrated. Like there are days that we are going to feel like that, right? And, um, Gonna do my do it and God be with us that day. Um, so that's pretty much um, what I had to say. I just wanted to come in one minute and try to explain some things that are going on that hopefully people don't take it um, the other way around. God bless you.